Hello everyone. Uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to Windows Server Administration Demo. Uh, and coming to myself. Uh, my name is Anant. I have uh, 17 plus years of experience in system, network, and admin uh, and application support. Uh, and working uh, on uh, Windows, Linux, and Azure, and AWS uh, in the current company. Uh, in the current company, I'm working as a lead uh, since seven years. Uh, it's a Fortune 500 company. So uh, coming to topics, today's topics, what is OS? What is OS? OS means operating system. So operating system is an interface between user and computer hardware. The hardware of computer cannot understand the human readable language as it works on a binary zeros and ones. Also, it is very tough for humans to understand the binary language. In such cases, we need an interface which can translate human readable language uh, to hardware uh, language, binary, uh, vice versa, for effective communication. So we cannot talk to hardware. We cannot talk to hardware. We cannot communicate hardware, computers. So hence, we need a, a translator or an interface to communicate hardware. So that is called operating system. Operating system is an interface which we can communicate computer hardware through operating system. So every, every hardware has an interface. For example, fan, there is a regulator. There is an interface. So TV, remote, so everything, every hardware, there is an interface. Likewise, window, likewise, computer also need an interface. Computer also need an interface that is called operating system. That is called operating system. So without, without the interface, we cannot uh, communicate effectively with the hardware. So take any take any hardware other than computer, take any hardware, fan, TV, washing machine, fridge, and take anything, take anything. Without the interface, we cannot communicate effectively with that hardware. Without, so, but the interfaces may vary because so interface for fan, it is a regulator. For TV, it is a remote. For washing machine, there are uh, uh, switches and uh, regulators. So for every uh, hardware, there is an a interface. So, so that we can effectively communicate hardware with the interface. So likewise, in computer also, we need interface because we cannot communicate uh, with hardware so hardware uses binary languages binary languages zeros and ones this is a binary so you cannot understand this language you can but it is very highly uh, to understand the binary language but users we are using the human readable language like uh, english hindi telugu tamil malayalam a lot of languages french so these are the languages which uh, humans uh, use using, right? So, but computer cannot understand these languages. So, so we need an interface that is called operating system. Okay, so the through the operating system, we can communicate the hardware and the hardware also can communicate through the operating system to the users. Okay, so coming to categories of OS. There are categories. So what are the categories? Single user, single task operating system, single user, multitask operating system, multi-user, multitask operating system. There are three operating systems. So single user, single task operating system means one user can work on one task at a time. That is called single user, single task operating system and second one is single user multitask operating system so single user can work on multiple 
task at a time that is called multi-user multitask operating system and multi-user multitask operating system means multiple users can work on multiple tasks at a time so so multiple users can log into the mission at a time and can work on multiple tasks is called multi-user multitask operating system so for single user single task operating system we can uh, say ms dos so ms dos is a single user single task operating system so if you open ms dos only one user can work on only one task so uh, if i see only one task only can run at a time in the ms dos but in windows c uh, in windows single user multitask operating system one user can work on multiple tasks see i have opened all these tasks these are all the tasks multiple tasks so i'm the only user in this system but i'm working on multiple tasks at a time i can open multiple applications and i can work on multiple applications at a time okay and multi-user multitask operating system for that so for a single user multitask operating system we call windows client operating system we can we can say windows client operating system so there are list of operating systems uh, in windows c from uh, windows 95 windows 95 98 most of them i think doesn't know uh, these versions these are very old versions so and these are the line is c xp vista 7 8 8.1 10 10s 11 these are the client operating systems so windows releases two types of operating systems one server operating system and second client operating system see if you see all these are client operating systems okay and these are the server operating systems windows server nt uh 2000 2003 2008 2012 16 19 20 22. so these are the server operating system i'll tell you why uh, the microsoft is going releasing windows and the client operating system what is the difference between client and server okay we'll discuss um so these are the categories of operating systems so multi-user multitask operating systems under this category we can call unix linux windows server operating system comes in the server operating system multiple users can log in and can work on multiple tasks okay so coming to what is windows what is windows windows is an operating system windows is an operating system so why we are using windows more in the market because it is a GUI and easy to understand and easy to work. Why Windows uh, uh, using more in the market means it is a easy to use and easy to understand. And it is a GUI operating system, graphical user interface. It is a GUI, graphical user interface. So it, Windows is a, like a game so easy navigation easy can understand so with little guidance windows can easily learn then compared to other operating systems like linux unix mac and other operating system windows is very easy to understand and easy to work and it's like a game and we can clearly uh, saying it clearly shows that navigation navigation is very important so uh, does anyone um, um, taking coaching on android operating system uh, to use uh, in their phones no right so we can easily use the android operating system because it is even easy navigation if you have a little bit guidance or else self-learning also uh, can learn android operating system which we are using in the mobile right so because of easy navigation uh, easy clear uh, clear uh, understanding and the graphics so so because of graphics uh, we are able to uh, understand very quickly windows 
okay that is the reason a uh, windows uh, have uh, server uh, two types of operating system like client and server operating system client and server operating system server os and client os so server os and client os here i'll show you this these are the server operating systems and these are the client operating systems windows 95 to windows 11 okay and windows nt to windows 2022 these are the server operating system okay so coming to computer boot process so have you ever uh, wonder how the uh, how the computer is boot booting have you uh, tried to uh, learn and uh, even have you have you wonder to know uh, what is a boot process so when you power on the when you click the power on button uh, on the cpu the cpu takes a minute or half minute and it loads the desktop so what was happened between uh, in between the one minute in one minute what was uh, happened back end have you ever tried to know so let's let's see how the computer is booting in a one minute what was computer is doing So this is a computer boot sequence. So processor, RAM, ROM, SMBS. I hope uh, all are aware of this parts. So when you click on power on button, user press the power on button. When, when user press the power on button, hits to SMBS. It is a switch mode power supply, SMBS usually. So what the SMPS do, SMPS, SMPS supply our, uh, the power into, into all parts in the computer. It provides our supply uh, power to all parts in the system, okay? So once get the power into the CPU, I mean computer, CPU execute hard code jump instructions from CPU register. What CPU do? CPU execute hard code jump instructions. Hard code jump instructions, hard code, hard code means which was written, which was written, which was written in the uh, processor. So hard code which we cannot edit and which we cannot remove. one moment yeah which we cannot remove which we cannot edit the instructions that is called hard code instructions hard code instructions okay so cpu execute hard code jump instructions from cpu register what cpu do cpu execute the hard code jump instructions from the cpu register so after executing the cpu uh, hard code jump instructions what the instruction saying CPU jump to the predefined memory location. In the jump instructions saying, saying jump into the predefined memory location. What is the predefined memory location? ROM. ROM is the predefined memory location. So ask the CPU to jump into the, what uh, instruction saying? Saying, CPU, please jump into the uh, memory, predefined memory location, ROM, okay? Where the BIOS is located, where the BIOS is located. BIOS means basic input output system. It is a small program or it is a small program. See how the BIOS looks like? Hope you all aware of this, okay? This is called BIOS, basic input output system. It is a small application. It is a small application or a software. 
So once uh, execute the BIOS from the CPU uh, from the ROM. So the BIOS located in a ROM. Okay. CPU start executing BIOS from the ROM. CPU e start executing BIOS from this ROM. BIOS performs the hardware test. So what the BIOS will do? BIOS will perform the hardware test. BIOS will perform hardware test. So that is the test is called post power on self test. Post is called power on self test. So if the power on self test, what the post do? Checks the, all the hardware in the computer, whether they are able to power up and they're able to run or not. So the post is is uh, check the hardware uh, in the computer, whether the hardware is able to work or not, and they're able to get the power or not. So if the post is failed, the test is failed, then you will get booting halts. You won't uh, see the next screen. If the post is succeed, I think most of them uh, we experience the booting halts in our life. Okay, everyone usually uh, experience the booting halts because so when the RAM is in loose contact or a hard disk or a uh, processor uh, or any loose connections, you may get a booting halts because the BIOS test when when the device are in loose connection uh, not able to uh, i mean connect a motherboard so obviously we'll get booting halts so then the post will fail if the post is fail we'll get booting halts no further uh, screen will come okay if the post is succeeded if the post is succeed what will happen BIOS loads partition table into RAM. What the BIOS do? BIOS loads the partition table into the RAM. Where the partition table available and from where the BIOS is loading the partition table is a question, right? So let's show you partition table. One more. Okay. So this is the MBR record. MBR means master boot record where it reside where where it stay it stays in the hard disk So that is the reason we called a first boot record or first boot first partition Okay, so MBR is master boot record. So in this MBR there are three parts The MBR divided into three parts. So one is bootloader and second one is partition table and third one is magic number so this is total bytes 512 bytes the size of mbr is 512 bytes and uh, the mbr having three parts each part uh, is one uh, the part is bootloader one 446 bytes it is the size of bootloader is 446 and partition table 64 bytes and magic number two bytes so what the part what this do exactly coming to bootloader bootloader is having the operating system path where the operating system stays resides so the bootloader having a path of the operating system the partition table so in the system what are the partitions uh, information what are the partitions are there? Those information uh, is stored in the partition table. Stored in the partition table. So the partition table having the information of all the partitions in the system. And coming to magic number. So this magic number uh, tells that this is a right MBR record. So we see the um, uh, we see uh, social networking sites. We see blue tick. So that means blue tick means it's the official. It's a genuine account. So likewise here magic number is a boot blue tick for the MBR record. So it's a two bytes. It occupies two bytes and partition table occupies 64 bytes and bootloader 
takes 446 bytes. So total 512 bytes record. This is in disk. This is in that is called we call first sector of this is the first sector in the hard drive in the hard disk. This is the first sector. So this is the first sector. We call this is the first sector. Okay. So from this from this MBR BIOS loads this partition table from the MBR record. BIOS loads partition table. BIOS loads partition table into RAM. So what the partition table into load into loads into RAM. So first partition start executing of boot bootloader. What they do? The first partition in the MBR record is bootloader, right? Bootloader. So this bootloader will execute because the bootloader knows where the OS is, where the Windows or Linux or any other operating system is there. So this bootloader execute into, I mean, loads into RAM. Then bootloader initialize the second stage. Bootloader initialize the second stage and loads OS kernel into RAM. And the RAM, uh, the operating system will load into RAM and start loading. This is the first stage of boot sequence. Any operating system, any system should go through this boot process. Okay, the same boot process for any operating system. From here, from second stage, from second stage, uh, if 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 the if Windows operating system the mission, then Windows will load, and if the system having Linux, Linux will load. From here, the operating system start loading into the RAM, and RAM execute and load the uh, operating system. Okay. So this is the computer boot sequence uh, for any operating system. So from here, the operating systems will load. Then you will get a desktop, okay, run levels, sessions to log in the operating system, okay? So coming to architecture, what is the architecture? Windows architecture. So Windows has a, a layered architecture that contains two main components. That contains two main components. So let's see, this is a this is a yeah. The main uh, this is the layer. Windows has a layered architecture that contains two main components. One is user and kernel. User kernel. There are two components. Basically, on the hardware kernel. What is the kernel? Kernel is nothing but operating system. On the hardware kernel will install. Okay, on the kernel applications. On the kernel means operating system. On the operating system, we, we can install application services. So usually users work on operate, uh, applications and services and kernel as well. So that is the reason there are two. There are two modes. Windows has a layered architecture that contains two main components, user mode, kernel mode. In the user mode, the programs and subsystems have have a limited access to the system resources, which kernel has unrestricted access to the external device and memory. So usually users doesn't have much access to the hardware, but kernel has a unrestricted access on the hardware. So that is only difference. Okay, so and memory also, not only hardware and memory, everything. So kernel has a unrestricted access on the hardware, but user mode doesn't have that unrestricted access, only less access to the hardware. So user mode installed applications, including Windows application program interface and user mode uh, drivers. So 
applications, services, drivers, run this mode. Usually in user mode, what? We use install applications, okay? Uh, including Windows application programs and other programs and other services uh, 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 and the interfaces, other program interfaces. So drivers, okay? So these are all we uh, install on user mode. Kernel mode, the operating system. So what the kernel mode only operating system, uh, other kernel drive more drivers, operating system kernel, okay? Uh, and file system drivers run this mode. What in this mode runs only operating system and other kernel mode drivers and the operating system kernel and file system drivers runs in this mode. So this is the basic architecture of Windows. Okay. Next, coming to what is server and what is client? Server, server a system. Let's let's take one system. If the system provides services to the other systems in the network, is called a server. Coming to client, what is client? A system that uses remote services from the a server is called a client. So let's give you a little more idea on this. So a system, one system which is providing services. If, if any system providing services to other systems in the network is called a server that we can call a server. So, this is the, let's say, in system, this is the Google, Google.com, okay, Google.com is the, this is the Google.com server, okay. this one that's this one and here google website is there okay and my system is here this is my personal pc like we can we can call sys2 okay sys2 this is my personal pc my pc Okay, so I browse, I browse www.google.com website in my personal PC. Okay, so so what what do what will what will happen so if i browse www.google.com the request will go on go over internet this is the internet okay internet from the internet it will reach to google so google respond to our request like we we browse google.com right so responded so hence we can see the google.com site okay see now i browse google.com so google is responded so that's the reason it is loaded it's loaded in my mission right okay so wh what will happen then so which is the server and which is the client here which is the server and which is the client here see this this one is providing 
Google website and I'm using Google website. So the, the system which, which is providing services is called a server. So this is server because this, this one is providing Google service. So that is the reason this is a server and the sys2 using Google service is called, this system is called client. So simple, a system that provides services to other systems in the network called a server, a system that uses remote services from a server is called a client. So the, the sys1 is providing Google service and sys1 Sys2 is using the Google services called a, uh, Sys1 is called a server and Sys2 is a client machine. Okay. Next. Next, what is NIC card? So NIC card is a device. NIC means network interface card. It is a device. It is very important device. Uh, to communicate uh, computer uh, to other computers in the network. If the computers uh, want to communicate with other computers uh, in the network, we need a NIC card. So NIC card, how NIC card looks like? See, this is the NIC card. This is very important device. Without the device, the computer cannot, computer, uh, cannot uh, communicate with other computer in the network. Without this, without this device, computer cannot communicate with other computer in the network. So this, this NIC card has a MAC address that is media access control address. NIC, this we can call network interface card, network interface controller. So we can call uh, network interface controller and network interface card and LAN card. There are many names uh, to this, okay? So, so this NIC card has a MAC address. That is media access control address or a physical address. We can also call physical address. We can also call physical address. So what is this MAC address? How it looks like, where we can see this? So if you run ipconfig in your computer, CLS IP config slash all. If you run this command, you can see the physical address. See, this is the physical address. This is a MAC address, or we can call also MAC address, physical address or MAC address. See, and this MAC address is very unique, like our like our IME number. See, in mobiles we have IME number. So that is very unique because uh, uh, mobile companies are design and uh, develop and same kind of mobiles, color, features, shape, everything will be same. But how can we differentiate the uniqueness among the mobiles? So that is called IME number. So we are logically we are buying not only mobile we are also buying ime number from the company so that ime number never assigned to any mobile except your mobile so that is very unique so that is the reason they mentioned the bill ime number this ime number mobile belongs to you we are selling this mobile to you so that way they give the sale uh, receipt so ime number is very much important if you lost the mobile also police uh, will ask your ime number what is your ime number so that so the same model same color we can see n number of phones in the market so you cannot find your phone only you can find the phone with your IME number. Likewise, here if there are every system, every system has this card. So exactly what's your 
NIC card. You cannot tell until unless you know the MAC address. This is physical address. So this address is very unique across the world. If you compare with any NIC card, you cannot find the same similar MAC address with uh, any NIC card. Okay, so that that is the uniqueness of this physical address or MAC address. Okay. So coming to IP address. So IP address is very important to communicate computer uh, with other computer in the network. So for example, NIC card is a mobile. Let's compare NIC card is a mobile like we and mac address is i m e i number and ip address what ip address mobile number so without these three can we communicate with any other person in the network no right so likewise how the mobile uh, has a ME number and a mobile number. Okay, so cell phone. Okay, so similarly, with the computer cannot communicate without the NIC card and MAC address and IP address. So if you if you compare with mobile cell phone. Similarly, computer also needs NIC card, MAC address, and IP address. Without these three, cannot communicate with other computer. The computer cannot communicate with other computer in the network. Okay. So coming to what is the difference between network and networking? What is the difference between network and networking? So network so the main difference between network and networking is network is collection of computing devices connected via communication media to exchange the information and resources that is called network so network is basically collection of computing devices connected via communication media so all the computers let's say So, so like this is a switch a router switch what the switch do all the computers in the network let's say these are the computers So all the computers connected to switch. Switch is a device to communicate all the devices to connected. So, so this is cable. Cable. This is cable. So all the, this is called network. Network is a collection of computing devices connected via communication media to access the information and resources. So now this computer can communicate vice versa because all are connected switch and now they can communicate vice versa and exchange the information exchange the data and exchange the resources that is called network and what is networking networking is the process of creating and maintaining and troubleshooting the network so networking is a 
practice of creating network so maintaining and securing and troubleshooting the network that is called networking okay so next what is what are the networking devices switch firewall router so switch what switch do switch is a what switch do switch is create the network switch is a hardware device that centralized communication between wide devices connected with a within a lan it is a hardware device that centralized communication between wide devices connected within a lan so i just this is see switch switch is a hardware let me show you how switch looks like in the real time switch images oh no network switch i can call network switch otherwise this so this is the switch so all computers connected to this ports so hence switch is a centralized communication switch is a centralized communication between wireless uh, wired devices so here here so this computers now if if all the computers connected to switch hence the computers can communicate vice versa communicate vice versa any computer in this this computer can communicate this computer and this computer sorry and this computer can communicate this computer and vice versa all the computers can communicate vice versa okay because all computers have have connected to switch switch is a centralized communication switch is a centralized communication so that's the reason that's why the computers can communicate vice versa okay next router so what is router Rou router is a device enables communication between two different two two or more different logical networks see router how looks router looks like let me show you router so these are the wi-fi routers which are using in the uh, our in our home I'm talking about Cisco routers where we use these routers in the organizations companies so this router enables communication between two different logical networks where router enables the communication between two or more different logical networks so how the logical networks uh, communicate for example this is a network this is a network okay so this name is network one network one for example this this is the first floor in the same building let's say this is a first floor and this is a second floor network two in the building first floor second floor okay is in second floor if both networks and it is in a different different ips and different ips this network in different ips so to communicate these two networks we need a router we need a router let's say this is the router we need a router 
So in router, using router, we can communicate these both networks. Otherwise, these both networks cannot communicate. Cannot communicate. And coming to firewall, what is firewall? What is firewall? Firewall is a device. How the firewall looks like, I'll show you in the next. Firewall. So, this is the Cisco firewall. This is the firewall. Firewall is a uh, hardware device which protects the network from the unauthorized access. It allows and denies the network traffic based upon policies configured. So, coming to what the firewall do, firewall is a protector from unauthorized access. For example, mm, see, if someone, if someone coming, uh, if someone trying to access our network, which doesn't have access, so the firewall will protect from unauthorized access from unauthorized access and it allows and denies based on the policies so let's firewall uh, let's firewall not this um firewall images just yeah so i'll copy from this is firewall copy maze so the firewall see all this the router connected to firewall and firewall one second Okay. Mm, one moment. I need. Okay. This is the internet. This is the internet. So whatever the request coming from the public network firewall filter it firewall will filter it so firewall protects our network from unauthorized access if anyone trying to access our data hack our data the firewall protects us based on the policies based upon the policies which we configured in the firewall so we have configured uh, some policies usually we configure some policies so the based on the policies the firewall will act like security guard so if we say security guard don't allow anyone inside so security guard usually follow this rule so likewise if, I, if we say firewall don't allow anyone except this except the employees who are having id card so if you say to security guard security guard only allows who, are, who have access to the premises. So others, security guard will not allow to come inside. Likewise, firewall is also, when we define rules in the firewall, uh, the firewall based on the rules, uh, it will work. It will, based upon the rules, it will work. Next, types of networks. So LAN, MAN, WAN. So types of networks. LAN means local area network. MAN means metropolitan area network. And WAN means wide area network. Wide area network. So we will discuss more about LAN, MAN, WAN more in upcoming classes. So let's say what is LAN. LAN means local area network are used to connect in uh, connect inter connection of PCs and other network devices that are very close together in the limited area, such as floor of a building 
building itself within a campus so this is land land means in a building in a floor all the computers connected together all the computers connected like switch all the computers connected to switch all the computer connected to switch is called lan this is lan local area network man man means metropolitan area network are used to connect networking devices that may span around entire the city for example we have a uh, offices like different places like in the city so in com coming to bangalore uh, whitefield and electronic city so many companies we can see in both places so that companies network like hcl T wipro so we can see these companies uh, in both places uh, electronic city and um, whitefield okay and manita tech park there are many places um, in a city we have same companies so the companies network called man metropolitan area network so those uh, our branches will connected as a man metropolitan area network okay and coming to van wide area network coming to van wide area network so we call wide area network is a wide area network which connects two or more lands presence at the uh, present a different geographical location so that is called van so we call van in our day-to-day uh, -day language internet so in layman language we call internet van is called internet the internet is a, a connected together all at different different uh, locations different geographical locations in a different geographical locations all the networks connected together is called van that is called internet that is called internet van is nothing but internet wide area network which connects two or more lands at a different geographical location geographical location different different places us australia india sri lanka pakistan china so from different geographical locations uh, we connected together that is van okay so that's all for today any questions any questions thank you all thanks for joining have a great day see you tomorrow